My name is Elena DeSalvo, and I go to St. Savior High School. And I did a project using something that I think is really cool, which is magnets. Before I started my project, I had to answer a lot of different questions. And the first question I had to answer is, what kind of plant am I going to use in my experiment? So I actually decided to use wheatgrass. You might not have heard of that plant, but a lot of people use it for shakes and smoothies and drinks, for health drinks, because it has a lot of really good benefits. Um, it's very easy to grow. You can grow it almost anywhere. It grows to full size in almost six to 10 days, and it does a lot of really cool things. It helps prevent diabetes. It treats stomach issues, it provides many vitamins and antioxidants, and it also contains high amounts of protein and fiber. So this is definitely a plant that you want to have around. And my next question I had to answer was, what kind of magnets am I going to use in my experiment? The idea that I had before starting this was that if I exposed plants to magnets, they would grow better. So I had to pick really good magnets to make sure that it would work. So I had two, three different groups. My first group was my control group, where it was just plain plants, no magnets involved. The second group was my first control group with the weak magnet over there on the left. And the other one was the strong magnet over here. But a problem that I had that I didn't really realize would happen was rust. If you put metal in water for a really long time, it gets really rusty and gross. And that was not good because it interfered with how the plants were growing. So for my next trial, I got even better magnets. I got, for my wheat group, I got magnets that were made of iron, but they had this special plastic coating on them that made it so that they wouldn't rust. And for my second experimental group, I had these super, super strong magnets. They're made of this material called neodymium. And they're so strong that they can actually stick to the hood of a car. And the rust was totally gone. I didn't have that problem anymore. So all throughout the experiment, I had to take a bunch of different measurements. So of course, I measured how tall the plants were growing to see if the magnets changed that. But I also had to measure the pH, the temperature, and the electrical conductivity of the water. This was all to make sure that the plants were getting enough nutrients and that they were going to be OK while they were growing. And I used a bunch of different tools to do this. I used a ruler to measure the height. I used a pH pen and an EC pen to measure the water. And I also had this special little solution that I would pour in, which had maxi grow, which is full of nutrients, and water. And that would make it so that the plants would grow right. And I put all that in using a measuring cup. So here's a picture of how I set my experiment up. All the way in the back is the control group with no magnet. You can see I have two sets of Rockwell squares there. There's eight in each group. In the middle, I have the experimental group number one. Now, you can't really see it that well here, but the weak magnet is in the middle between those two. And in the front, you have the experimental group two with the strong magnet, and that magnet's sitting right there in the middle. And I drew a little picture so you can understand how I did it better. So you can see all the way on that end, you have the control group. There's nothing in the middle. In the middle, you have the experimental group one with the weak magnet in the middle there. And over here, experimental group two with the strong magnet in the middle. After a really long time, this took me almost a month and a half, I put all of my data together and I came up with a couple of graphs. So I found out that if you have no magnet, the plants actually grow taller. And that doesn't seem like it really makes any sense. But I also did something else. I weighed every single plant that I grew. And I found out that the stronger the magnet, the more the plant weighs. I was pretty stumped when I figured this out. But I did a lot of research, and here's what I think happened. So I found out that by exposing water to magnets, the salt ions change and dissolve, creating pure water that is more easily taken up by the plant. So right here, I kind of have a little map that shows my way of thinking. So if the water given to plants is exposed to a bunch of different magnets, then that means that the plants take up more nutrient-rich water than the other plants that have no magnets. And then that means that there's more growth inside and not outside. But the height is smaller. So basically, what I think happened is the plant cell size went down, 
but the cell density went up. Density is really like how much stuff is inside of something. It, it's not necessarily bigger, but you can usually tell by how much it weighs. So I think that because the plants with magnets were heavier, they were actually denser, which means they had more nutrients. So when I finished all of this, I really had to think, how can I make this better? If I want to do this experiment again, how can I make it better? So what I realized was I had all of the plants sitting in one tray in the same water. But if I really want to see how magnets change the plant growth, next time I'm going to have to separate the water that the plants grow in. That, because that could change so many things. That could change the height, the weight, and it could change the electrical conductivity of the water, which is usually just used to measure the nutrients, but maybe the magnets could change that too, and that would have an impact on how plants grow. So I have a little picture here, and I want you to think about something. You see all of these carrots? Do you want the skinny ones, or do you want the fat ones? Yeah. The fat ones, right? So. The skinny ones, the skinny ones have taller leaves on top, and the fat one has much smaller leaves. But even though from the top that one looks smaller, it's actually better on the inside, on the bottom. So what I figured out is quality is better than quantity, and that means that you want something to be good. You don't just want to have a lot of it. Urban farmers, all of us growing plants in the city, we need a way to grow richer, more nutritious food in a really tiny amount of space because we don't have huge amounts of grasslands where we can grow crops. We have schools and office buildings and not a lot of room. So we're going to need a way where we can grow the best food we can even if it's not going to take up that much space. My last thought is how could this help people globally? So climate change, that's what we've been talking about all day. Climate change does a lot, but one main thing that it does is it creates really bad weather. People don't know what the weather is going to be, and sometimes the weather really wrecks a lot of plants and a lot of crops, and it's very, very bad. So what we need is a new way to grow plants. So if I do more trials with these magnets, if they actually make plants grow better, then maybe that can help us fix our problem of plants that are not growing well due to climate change. Thank you.